Hello everyone, welcome back to this new video. In this series, where we simulate a slum system from scratch in Python. Today, we will tackle the subject of landmarks and data association. We will provide a clear view on both of these terms and we will explain step by step how to implement this concept in order to make a reliable slum system. Before we do that, however, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, it's absolutely free and you can always change your mind. Anyways, without any further ado, let's begin. A landmark by definition is an object or feature of a landscape that is easily seen and recognized from a distance, especially one that enables someone to establish their location. The closest example to this is when you try to find your own house in Google Maps. The first thing you'll do is to try to find some easily recognizable features. For example, let's say you have an apartment in this area. From your previous knowledge, you know that in the north to your place, there is a big yellow building. And so you will use it as a landmark. When you find that building, locating your own apartment is an easy task. However, another problem rises when there is more than one identical looking buildings. If you pick the wrong one, this may lead you to a totally different place. So it's always a better idea to use more than a one landmark to find the position of something. In our indoor environment, we extracted line features from the walls. And these features will be used as landmarks in order to locate our position. In the previous case of Google Maps, we assumed that we know exactly the position of each landmark, but this may not always be the case. Anyways, we will deal with that in other videos. All we care about now is how we can choose some good landmarks from the many line features we have and how we can successfully associate these landmarks. The first part of this problem is fairly easy. You just have to put some conditions to filter out the features and only consider the ones that satisfy this condition as a good reliable landmarks. Let's call this set of conditions the validation gate. Usually, we use conditions such as minimum length and minimum number of points that make this feature, but if you remember, we already put this condition in order to get the features in the first place. Another condition you can make is the velocity of the landmarks, since moving objects are not allowed. Another condition is the observability, since this feature may be hiding behind some furniture, which will prevent you from observing it very often. This is why we will put every new feature that passes the validation gate in a buffer or a test area until we will observe it in a sufficient number of times. Since we have a list of landmarks now and every one of them possesses a unique ID, we will have to tackle the problem of data association. Before we do this, we have to change the representation of the landmarks from a line segment into a single point defined by its x and y coordinates. This point is obtained by the orthogonal projection of the origin of the reference frame to the line that hold the line segment. Doing this will allow us to compare newly observed landmarks to the old one using the distance between them. If it's less than a predefined threshold, then we consider them to match. But before that, we still have another case to check. The projection of this new landmark and the old one may be the same, but they still can be two different line segments on the same holder line. For this reason, we have to check whether these two line segments overlap partially or totally before we can say they are the same. After we are sure we observed an old landmark, we will replace the old measurement by the new one. Since we know now how this works, let's see how we can create a Python implementation. In the last video, we created this file that contained the feature detection class. And so in this video, we will write the code for data association in the same file. First of all, we will have to declare a list in here to store our landmarks. After this, we will add another method to the feature detection class called line fits to point. And as its name suggests, it will convert the line feature representation to point representation. As we explained earlier, doing this is straightforward. We loop through the extracted features and calculate the orthogonal projection. Of course, the orthogonal projection of the origin on the line that holds the feature's line segment. By giving it the coordinates of the origin, the slope and the intercept of the line feature. 
Just so you know, the information about each feature is currently stored in a list that contains the line parameters and the endpoints of the line segment. After the projection point coordinates is returned, we append it in addition to the original features information to the new representation list and return it. Now that we have our new representation of the features, let's create a new function called landmark association that takes the features that are now called landmarks as input. There is no need for a validation gate so far or a buffer since we already filtered the landmarks in the feature detection step and our environment is not that complicated. We will add them later if we need them, but for now, let's keep things as simple as possible. The threshold for matching new landmarks will be 10 pixels for now. The first thing we will do here is to loop through all the new observed landmarks and each time we will set this flag that indicates whether this is never seen landmark as false. Inside another loop, that loops through the existing landmarks, we will calculate the distance between the new observed landmark and every one of those. If the distance is less than the threshold, we check if the two landmarks are overlapped. If they are not overlapped, however, that means that our newly observed landmark does not match with this particular landmark and we have to keep looking for a match. If they do overlap, then we pop the old landmark from this list and insert the new one in its place and set the flag to true and break after that. If the loop is ended without finding any match for our observed landmark, that means that this is a new never seen landmark and we have to append it to the list. Checking whether two line segments overlap is an easy task, yet not so obvious. If you have two line segments on the same line, then if the distance between the centers of these segments is greater than the sum of each half segment, in that case, they do not overlap. No matter what the size of the two segments is, or the line slope, this will always be true. Implementing this is easy. You just gotta calculate the centers of the two line segments, the distance between them, and the length of each one. The function this point to point we are using now actually belongs to the feature detection class. And the reason why we are able to use it here outside of its class without having to create an instance is because we set it to be a, a static method by writing the following line before its definition. The last part is just the condition that we talked about earlier. If the distance is bigger than the sum of the two halves, then we return false the segments don't overlap, and if they do, then we return true. Now is the moment of truth, we are gonna use the data association in our project and see what happens. In the main file, we will first store the extracted features information inside the features list, and then after the data storage line, we will call the line fit to point, and then after that, we will call the landmark association providing the features that we stored just now. We will also draw the landmarks in the map using this loop. Finally, we are done and all that is left is to test the code. We can see the blue lines being drawn in the screen. These are our landmarks and the green lines are the newly observed landmarks. As you can see, this implementation was successful. You can change the threshold to get better results. I'm gonna post the code on GitHub so you can check it out and uh, as always i see you in another video with another idea goodbye